So you want to be a producer, right? But you might not know where to get started in this process, which might seem a little daunting and honestly a little scary while you're getting your musical production journey started. Well, fear not. I'm glad that you found me because in today's video, I'm going to help you conquer your fears of learning the basics of the industry standard for recording software. And that is Pro Tools. What's up? My name is Paul the Fifth. Fifth. In some of my previous videos, I showed you how to get Pro Tools first, how to get it set up, installed, and how to create your very first session. Today, we are diving a little deeper. So by the end of this video, I hope you say, wow, I actually learned some things about Pro Tools and maybe it wasn't really as bad as I thought. So for now, I'm gonna keep things on the more basic side and try to make things easy to understand for you. It is my goal to show you how to set up another session from scratch, save it to an external hard drive, and show you the ins and outs of Pro Tools. Some key features and some of the things that I wish I would have learned when I was first starting off. I'm gonna have some of my previous interns joining me today. It's gonna be hella fun. You ready? Let's go, let's get it. Show real. Yo, my name is Paul the Fear. Some folks keep that purple stuff in their cup, if you know what I mean. But me, I'm like Kermit the Frog over here sipping on some tea before we tackle this tutorial. I got this idea from the great Eddie Kramer. Check this out. This is Eddie Kramer at LAFX Studios in North Hollywood. Having a nice cup of tea before I attack this mix. So today I'm sipping on some lemon throat coat. That's the type of tea that keeps your throat coated and at ease for your sessions. Maybe I should reach out to them for a sponsorship as much as us musicians drink this product. Before I get started, check out the sweet Pro Tools mug that I got from Etsy. For some reason, everything just seems to taste better when I drink from it. Before we get started, have you got yourself one of these? If not, you'll need to get one. Do you know what that is? This is an iLock. This little guy is gonna hold all of your licenses for Pro Tools. So it's gonna store all your licenses for your plugins when you're going to edit things in the software. This one here is an iLock 2. iLock has had an iLock 3 out for some time and recently an iLock 3 USB-C has hit the market. So I'm gonna pick up one of those relatively soon. You can pick one up at music stores like Guitar Center or great music stores like Sweetwater or online at sweetwater.com. You can also pick up an iLock on Amazon or on iLock's website. That's ilok.com. All right, let me go ahead and turn around and show you the ins and outs of Pro Tools. Whoa! Good to see you, man, but how'd you get in here? It's been some time. It's been a couple years now. Yeah, wow, surprised indeed. I totally wasn't expecting you to stop by the studio today, but since you're here, would you like to help me uh, make a video to show these lovely folks some of the ins and outs of Pro Tools? Come on, man, it'll be hella fun. We'll do an impromptu QA type of thing. You down? Well, damn, Mr. Robot's got a robot wife and Paul V can't even meet anybody? What's up with that? Hang on just a second, Mr. Robot. I'm getting a text here. Okay. Oh, hey, Paul V. Thanks for having me on today. I like your purple shirt and I like the purple background. Everything's matching for the Avid Pro Tools video. That's their theme color. Can I come by the studio today? Hey, Paul V. I heard... Olivia and Mr. Robot are coming by the studio today. Can, can I stop by and make an appearance too? <laughs> oh, hey there, Paul the Fifth. I heard the whole gang's getting back together today. I assume it's cool if I stop by and shake my tail feather. <laughs> Paul the Fifth. It's me, Mr. 
Mr. Hood. I heard everybody else is coming by the store today. I want to come by too. You never did. Show me how to make that inner galactic beat. Oh my gosh, wow, this is so friggin' cool. It's like a reunion from two years ago. I say, let's do this. Okay, so I think the best way to go about it is I'll go ahead and show the ins and outs, and then you all can chip in when you want to. And if there's anything that I happen to miss or skip, you guys and Olivia, you can remind me. Is that cool? Okay? Yeah? Okay. yeah? Really let's do man. this. Well, I have a lot of questions to ask. <laughs> okay. I tend Sounds to forget good. things because. I'm All right, puff I think it's gonna dragon. be super spectacular. All right, who's excited? Are you excited? Because I'm excited to. All right, Paul the Fifth, I've got a question already. Yeah, what's up, Mr. Dragon? I can't for the life of me remember how to get a session okay. created. Can you please yes, exercise, some, exercise patience some patience and patience tell me here. what to do here, please? I was just about to do that, but okay. Here's what we do. I have got Pro Tools already loaded up on my laptop. Let's go ahead and dive in. Step one. First thing we'll do is go to File, Create, New. I'm gonna title this Intern Sesh. Intern Sesh. A couple things we see here. We'll keep that on dot .wave, sample rate, bit depth. What is that? Hey, Paul V, can I please explain bit depth for the sample rate? I think I'd be good at this. Cool. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Well, I also have a graph here too. The rate of capture and playback is called the sample rate. The sample size, more accurately, the number of bits used to describe each sample is called the bit depth or word length. The number of bits transmitted per second is the bit rate. All right, thank you, Olivia, for making that so simple and that was just very eloquent. So thank you again. Quick question, oh, Paul V. Where are you saving this uh, session to? What are we doing again? Great questions. Well, maybe not from you, Ticket Little, but Mr. Dragon, I am saving this sesh to my external Legacy Studios hard drive. Now that our session is titled, as Mr. Dragon just asked us, we're going to save this to my external hard drive. Here's the steps for that. We go to Location. Click on the LSN hard drive, new folder. We'll title this intern session, create, open, and within Pro Tools, create. Bam. What's next? Well, how about you go ahead and show us the layout of Pro Tools from left to right? It only makes sense to show a beginner that. All right, Mr. A, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Before we dive into things, let me tell you guys what version I'm using. I have Pro Tools 2021.3.1. <laughs> hey, Paul the Fence, you might want to check your email. There's been some significant Pro Tools updates. Pro Tools 2021.6 is here! Record and mix bigger sessions with 256 audio tracks and 64 I.O. channels. Two times more than previous versions. Why, yes, that's what I was using at the initial time of the filming. Since then, I have updated to the 2021.6. Since the original filming was done on the previous version, the tutorial for this video is in that. Future videos will be on current software. Okay, let's dive in. One of the first things we'll want to do before we even look at anything else, go to your setup, go to I O that stands for inputs and outputs. Let's go to your inputs here. We'll hit command A to select everything. Delete output, same thing. Command A, delete bus, same thing. Command A, delete. Let's go back to it. Then on your input, we'll reassign things. Input, default path, output. Okay, we're good. Bus, default path. Why do we do that? That is kind of like clearing your cache and your history on your computer. That way it's getting rid of the things that may not need to be there. So you're starting afresh for every session. Very important. Also under setup, a couple other things I want to mention. If we go to setup and under playback engine again, if we look under playback engine, you'll notice mine says MacBook Pro speakers. That's what our output is. That's how we're hearing things. If you want to record something in, you can change that right there. Currently, I don't have my interface connected to my laptop, 
But if I wanted to record just like a quick voiceover, I could change that to my MacBook Pro microphone, hit yes and okay, and Pro Tools does what it does. You wanna hit no there when it does that. Now things are set for your incoming signal to be recorded. Now, you know. As one of my interns mentioned earlier, we're gonna be showing you Pro Tools from left until right. In the top corner, we have our modes, shuffle, spot, slip, and grid. On the grid, two different modes here, relative, and then you have absolute. Have you ever heard of aligning things to the grid? What does that mean? I think I know. The grid is what allows you to time align things. Am I right? Yes, bravo, Chicken Little. You pretty much hit it on the spot there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the grid in a little bit further detail. All right, to take a little deeper look at the actual grid and what that means and what it does, it allows you to time align your audio and your recordings. So I'll be talking about types of tracks here in a little bit with my interns. They'll be breaking those down a little more for you. There's something called a click track, which allows you to keep time. I've got a click track already created. Let's take a look at that. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. The click track allows you to keep things to the grid. Right here, you can see, we'll start on measure two. We have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that's your grid. It's really pretty simple, guys. But what do the modes actually do? Before we get into those specifically, there are three other things that we wanna make sure that we have enabled. These three icons, we wanna make sure that those are highlighted in blue. The first one we have here is your trim tool. You have your selector tool, and then we have your grabber tool. Under your trim tool, you actually have three different modes, okay? You have standard, TCE, and then you have your loop. This is your time compression, then a loop mode. Right now, we wanna make sure we have all three of those highlighted, okay? To do that, we just click and kind of hover right above the three and it highlights them. Okay, cool. So earlier I recorded a little snippet of audio and here it is. Hello, hello. What are you doing? Uh, I wasn't really paying attention at all. We have already looked at the four modes, what they mean and how they're used. We've also looked at our three types of tools. Let's continue on. One thing that will come in handy when it comes to editing, this is called your tab to transients. I think I've got somebody that can explain that a little bit better here for us. Mr. A, would you like to talk about this a little bit? Yeah, so your tab to transient button allows you to hit your tab button and it moves from one transient to the next. So here's how tab to transient works. Let me zoom in on this a little bit. I've got the voice recording from earlier pulled up here. We hit our tab and as you can see, it goes from one transient to the next, from one to the next. That is so dope when it comes to editing. For right now, we're gonna leave it at that, but let's move on to the next really cool thing in Pro Tools. Very cool. What do you think about that tab to transient feature? Right now, it may not make a lot of sense, but when you go to some detailed editing in Pro Tools, that is a must to have turned on. Let's look at a couple other cool features on the top of our bar. Moving onward from tab to transients. The next thing we'll see in this area here are some numbers. This first part, what is that? You have bars and beats, minutes, seconds, time code, feet and frames and samples. That's how you can view what's being played as far as your audio. For right now, let's keep that on bars and beats. Then moving along here next to that, we have your grid and nudge. On the grid, you can hit the down button and we see different variations here. We'll keep that on bars and beats as well. And then we'll keep that to the standard eighth note timing for quantization purposes. 
Underneath that, we'll see on your nudge, different amounts of milliseconds. You have 100, 10, and then one. Let's keep that on 10 milliseconds. Mr. Dragon, do you remember when we were at SAE Institute and one of the coolest instructors, his name was Sir. His name was Sir Alan Shacklock. He would say things, 10 oh, yeah, milliseconds. I love his British ever. accent. I learned so much from that man. I believe he's now teaching at Belmont University here in Nashville. I know we've covered a lot so far, but there are a few more important things that I want to show you. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I want to make sure that you leave fully confident in Pro Tools by the end of this video. So let's keep on moving on. Let's go up to our very top corner up here, okay? Right here, we'll see this down arrow. If we click on that, we'll want to hit on Transport what the heck is a transport chicken little can you talk to us about that a little bit this button here is return to zero this one is rewind fast forward go to end stop play and your record button hitting that red r here are a few other things that you'll want to enable on that down arrow within pro tools once we click on that MIDI controls, synchronization for sure. The Ableton link, that is up to you. I definitely recommend this one here, your output meters. This allows you to see your actual metering output, so your overall volume, okay? And then a few other things that I think are great. Universe, if you want your track list and your clip list enabled, that's great too, because it gives you some more options down here where you can see all your groups. I like that feature. And over here, you can see your clips. This really helps when it comes to a lot of fine tuning and detailed editing. So this next part that I'm about to show you in Pro Tools is definitely a personal preference. You can do whatever you want. You can enable as many or as little of these as you want to. If we go up here above your audio track and if we click on this little down arrow, you can do comments, mic pre's, instrument, your inserts, A through E, your sins, real-time properties, that gives you all of this right here. It just shows you a lot more details about your actual session. Not necessary all the time. It takes up a little more space, but it does give you all those details when you need them. Right above that, where it says bars and beats, you can do the same thing. Minute, seconds, time code, time code two, feet and frames, samples, markers. Yes, I like this a lot. Tempo meter, key, and chords. Again, that's up to you to disable all of those. If you hit option and click, it takes them all off. All right, Chicken Little, is there anything that you oh, think you want to share with these um, fine folks that they need to know about? Absolutely, it is so vitally important to keep the A to Z button enabled in Pro Tools at all times. Yes, thank you. Okay guys, this one is super important. It allows you to do some very finite moves, but it's super detailed and important. Let me show you why. Make sure in this corner, you click that A to Z. It'll be highlighted in yellow. This is important because for me, I'm in my older years in life. I am 40 and my eyesight has diminished. So I need to make my screen a lot larger. So here's some tips to make your audio files a little larger. If you hit T, Ah, oh, I can see that it makes things a lot bigger. If you hit R, that will make things smaller. I love that so much. Thank you, Chicken Little. I appreciate you. Mr. Unicorn, you've never been in any of my videos before, but thanks for showing up. What are you gonna bless these fine folks with? What kind of knowledge are we gonna share with them today? The most important thing to toggle from one screen to the next, command plus equals takes you from your mixer window to your audio screen. Yes, yes guys. If you wanna go from one screen to another, here's how you do that. If you hit command plus equals, that will take you from your mixer window back to your audio screen. So cool. Mr. Unicorn, thank you. Mr. Dragon, I've got a fantastic task for you, sir. Would you talk about types of tracks with 
these lovely viewers of ours? Types of tracks include routing folder, basic folder, audio track, aux input, master fader, VCA master, MIDI track, and instrument tracks. Olivia, would you be kind enough to tell these fine folks some key commands, please? Yeah, for sure. Anything for you, Paul V. Here's some quick keys. New track, shift command N to save, command S, undo, command Z. To undo your undo, shift command Z. To toggle to go from one screen to the next, command plus equals, splice your audio, B. Final recap. In this tutorial today, my interns and I, we showed you how to create this session from scratch, showed you how to save it to your external hard drive. We went over some of the types of tools in your menu. We talked about tab to transient, some key features, types of tracks, and we also talked about key commands. Olivia, Mr. A, Mr. Dragon, and Mr. Unicorn. Uh, you forgot to Is there me. anything that I you think, think we, we might we have missed to cover, in though, today's but can I be in content? Your logic videos? Well, I think we did a pretty good job, even though it was rather impromptu. I know you weren't expecting us, but... I I got to see you with the whole crew again. I'm gonna cry, but I shouldn't because my face will rise. I think we did a pretty spectacular job of showing the ins and outs of Pro Tools. What do you think, Mr. Unicorn? Oh, you know I had to make an appearance to make it magical. Oh, that was so much fun, everyone. But one thing I'll leave everybody with is to make sure to always be saving Command S. And there you have it. I think we covered just about everything we wanted to cover. If there might have been anything that we missed, is there anything else you'd like to know? Is there anything else you'd like to see from me? Let me know in those comments as well. Wrapping things up here, now I can call you my fellow engineers and soon to be top notch producers. Did I reach my goal of teaching you a lot about the ins and outs and some Pro Tools basics today? I really hope that you enjoyed today's content and if you did, I sure would appreciate those thumbs up because I really had a lot of fun brainstorming and thinking and putting this whole thing together for you. And if you haven't already, why don't you think about subscribing and if you haven't, go ahead and do it. it just takes about a second. It does a couple things. It really helps the channel grow and it allows me time and incentive to make other videos just like the one today for you. I'll be continuing on with more Pro Tools videos like this, but also going a different direction and showing you the ins and outs of Apple's logic. All right, my fellow engineers, until we meet again, my name is Paul the Fifth.